We'll pray. Lord God, maker of heaven and earth, help us now to look into your book, O oh Lord, and to understand it. We ask this through your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> the Bible is the word of God, and all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in right living or righteousness. Now, <clears throat> The Bible consists of 66 books, 39 in the Old, 27 in the New, and it's got five books of the law, it's got 12 books of history, it's got five books of poetry, it's got 12 book, or five books of major prophets, and 12 books of minor prophets, it's got four gospels, it's got one history book in the, Old, in the New Testament, it's got 21 epistles, 14 of them written by Paul, and the book of Revelations. And today we're uh, still on the fourth book of the law, which is Numbers. Numbers was written now uh, 1445 to 1405 BC by Moses. And 1 Corinthians 10 11 says, Now all these things happen to them for an examples and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. So that's how we see, look at the Bible. That's what, how we get, the, in, get into the Old Testament and we read it and understand it because we know that it's just not history per se. If that's all you're getting is just an old history, well, it doesn't help. But there's really, that's not what it is. It, there's a lot there to be, um, to pick up the Bible says, as examples to us. And uh, Ray Stemmen says, from Exodus to Deuteronomy, we have the way from Egypt to Canaan, a picture of the way the Christian will move from slavery of sin to the freedom of victory in Christ, victory in the midst of his enemies. This is precisely the spiritual journey God has called us to. Uh, Genesis gives us man's need of God. Exodus deals with God's delivering power. And Leviticus, how we are to worship. And now we're dealing with numbers, and it's going to teach us to learn to trust God. And uh, this is uh, the way they took off from Genesis, uh, which is Canaan, and you have the lay of the land, and they Genesis is all about there and how they wind up in Egypt. And then Exodus is about getting the people of God out of the world, bondage. That's what Egypt stands for. And so when you read about Egypt in the Bible, that's how the Bible sets up Egypt You're as the world or bondage. And so God wants his people not there. He wants them out of there. So on the way out, that's what Exodus Exodus, Exodus is about getting the people out and that is the route the route was there and you know folks the Sinai Peninsula which a lot of the Bibles book a lot of the maps in Bibles have it as part of a as, as being outside of Egypt but it's not Ex, the Sinai Peninsula is part of Egypt so if you're in, it, in that place you're still not out of Egypt in order to be out of Egypt, you got to be out. Saudi Arabia, that's where Midian is. And that's where uh, uh, Moses, when he, when he left Egypt, remember he was running away from Pharaoh? That's where he wound up at. In Midian, that's where he met uh, Jethro and married one of his wives. Now, a lot of, like I said, a lot of the Bible, a lot of the books or a lot of the maps that are in the Bibles have... Sinai, uh, the mountain of Sinai, they have it in the Sinai Peninsula, and it's really not there. It's really in Saudi Arabia. It's in, that's where Midian is. This is where the Jethro live, was living. And notice when they took the route, at, there's a place called there, Etham, and I think Etham means strength. And so at that place, it's very interesting because when Moses was Moses knew the place, Moses knew the route, and he was taking the people out of Egypt, and at that place, he made a turn. At that place, God told him, God told him to turn. 
and the people are getting ready to stone him. I said, are you nuts? He's taking him another route, but God told him to go that route because he wants to show off his strength. And they crossed the waters right there at Aqaba um, Gulf, which is very deep waters, very deep. Um, and that's where they crossed the, the Red Sea. A lot of people have, have uh, they, they point the southern um, uh, branch of the Red Sea as where they cross it, and that's why they make light of the fact that it's, it's, it's the reed ocean and it's very two, three deep feet deep. How would the horses get drunk, uh, drowned there? But it's not, it's not there where they, uh, where they cross. It's right here, and it's very deep there, mighty deep waters. Um, so, and then it's not until you cross over to the other side when you leave Egypt, that's when they break into song. That's when miraculous waters are provided. That's when manna is provided. And that's when the law is given. Everything happens on the other side. If you never leave Egypt, you don't get none of that. You know, it's only then. That is Mount Sinai, folks. It really is it exists. It's there now. You can go see it if you want to. Satellites, you can spot it. It's in Saudi Arabia. And that's where the book of Leviticus takes place. We already spent the book of Leviticus. Um, we taught that. And after, you know, they were there for two years. And then God tells Moses that it's time to go into the land. And they travel, uh, and we're going to be seeing that in, uh, in the book of Numbers. <clears throat> they travel to go into the land. And that's only a, an 11 days uh, hike, folks. <clears throat> 11 days. And at Kadesh Barnea, that's where they send in 12 spies. And they come back and they say there's giants in the land. And so they refuse to go into the land and thus spend 38 more years going around in circles. And that's a lifetime you can waste in the desert. Uh, that's in the book of Numbers. That's what we're gonna be looking at. Uh, and there's two deserts, the Negev, that's in the Sinai Peninsula, and the other one is the Arabian Paran, which is the Arabian Desert, and both are desolate wastelands. Um, wilderness and I think that's a picture of you can be in the world the wasteland of the world or you can be in the wasteland of self-righteousness religious uh, 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 wilderness so neither one will help you and so then after 40 years they they finally go in that's going to be the book of Deuteronomy and uh, Moses at that point dies but the beauty of, the, of what happens there, he shows them that that box, the Ark of the Covenant, that box contains the law. And he points it out to them. See, you have been a very rebellious, stiff, naked people. I mean, he comes down hard on the people. It's the book of Deuteronomy, it means second law. What that is, is it's a retelling of the law. That's what the whole book is about. But he comes down hard, and towards the end, he says, but you know inside that box? Inside that box, it's the law, and it's intact. It's pre like the day it was given. It was never broken. That's why you, you, they weren't allowed to touch the box, because God says, I'm going to keep it for you. And that box is Jesus. He keeps the law. He keeps the law for us. And that, folks, it's, it's, it's beautiful. That's fantastic. So these five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy, these five books are the law or the Torah, the Pentateuch and the law. And we're told for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So that's why that's written. And so we're looking now at, uh, at the thesis and I changed the thesis this morning. At 6.30 this morning, it was like, I woke up, I said, something's not right about my thesis. And it was a good thesis. But, uh, you know what? This is, this is the right thesis I had, but this is not the thesis I want. 
Second Peter. Um, well, no, this is, this is good. Uh, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. This is the right one. This is the right one. I kind of freaked out there for a while. I said, oh, no. Um, now, look at this, folks. Strangers and pilgrims. That means, that word strangers is near. It's made out of, of a two words, near and a dwelling. And what that really tells us is this is not our home. Because you're going to find in this book complaining and murmuring big time. That's the people of God. And God is going to tell us something. I don't want you to be complaining and murmuring. or Because we're pilgrims. We're passing through. We're just pilgrims. Abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. He says, especially a longing, especially for what is forbidden. And we can do that. We as Christians, we're traveling through this wilderness. And we can get, a, we can get into this thing. And it says, Paul tells us, I beseech you. You know, I implore you to abstain from that. Um, Notice this and look at this. Um, this is the one that woke me, it sort of woke me up this morning. I said, wow, let's go back to that thing. I woke up this morning, I turned the computer on, and, and I looked at that phrase. You know that that phrase is found 14 times only in the book of Numbers. Able to go forth to war. 15 if you count that. Uh, there's one time in Second Chronicles, but in Second Chronicles, the word there's a word there that's italicized. So, so actually, if you're a purist, the only place you'll find this phrase is in the Book of Numbers, 14 times. So that ought to tell us something. What is this? What is God telling us? If you're able to go forth to war, God says at a certain time, God expects you. Like in the, in, the, in the United States, when you turn 18, I know when I turned 18, my mom took me. He says, you need to get registered. And that, at that time, it was Vietnam. You had to register for the draft. And so the, the Lord expects the same thing from us. He says, at a certain point in time, you're expected to go forth to war. He says, at a certain point in time, he wants us to get involved and this and that's really what's going to be behind this lesson okay so look at this and the lord spake unto moses in the wilderness of sinai in the tabernacle of the congregation the lord spake to moses that's the law in the wilderness of sinai in the tabernacle of the congregation now when the Lord gave the law, that's, that's government. That's from the mountain. That's external. The Ten Commandments came from Mount Sinai. But now, the sacrifices and this thing that God is now talking about, it comes from within the tabernacle. It's different. Why is that? Because look at this, folks. Once you become a Christian, now, the minute you become a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit inside you. God speaks to us through the Holy Spirit that's inside of us. We're governed from within. If we, listen to the, if we listen to the Word of God, if we listen to His Spirit, He'll guide us if we listen to Him. Because He's inside. He's not outside. He's inside us. Because outside, look at this. Be because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it cannot. It is not subject to the law of God. We're not. We won't listen to God, to the law. In fact, if, if, you, if, you, uh, if you walk to a, through a park and they, there's a little sign on the, on the bench that says, wet, do not touch, the first thing you want to do is, I want to touch. You know, what? what is that? Because we're that's the, our nature in fact this is what it says neither indeed can be the carnal mind cannot do that that's why God had to put it inside of us and in the Old Testament he's showing them the tabernacles 
To us, it shows us that God is going to be indwelling us. But to them, God was saying, I'm going to be with you on this hike. I'm going to go with you. And you know what, folks? We're going to see in numbers how, how God gets frustrated with them. With all their murmuring and complaining. We want meat. It's, we want to go back to Egypt. We want garlic, you know, the, the et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They're just complaining. And so God says, I'm done with these people. He tells Moses, I'm, you know, let's, let's start over. Look what he says. And Moses spoke for the people because the Lord was not able to. Moses says, Lord, if you kill these people, because the Lord says, I'm going to kill them all. Can you imagine that? And Moses says, Lord, if you kill them, the people, what are the people going to say about you? Because the Lord was not able to bring these people into the land, which he swore unto them. Therefore, he has slain them in the wilderness. Lord, they're going to talk bad about you. It's an amazing, it's an amazing conversation. We're going to look at that. When, the, when Moses speaks for the people and the Lord didn't kill them. You know, but there's a whole thing going on there. <clears throat> so, it says here, on the first on the first day of the second month in the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt saying okay so this is when they started out in the second month we saw that the first month month is Nisan we just looked at that this is the second month and so in the second year that means they only spent two years there at Mount Sinai, getting the law and the, and the sacrifices and all that. Which this tells me, folks, this is why I always said that the honeymoon stage is two years long. After two years, the Lord says, okay, it's time to go to work. And normally, that's why I think the honeymoon stage is two years because the Lord is, expects you to bond during that time. And that's when every, as I, I mean, I've never been married, but that's the way I, I read it, how you can leave stuff laying around and you won't get in trouble for two years. Then after, after that, they're going to expect you to start picking things up and not squeezing the two space in the middle and stuff like that and leaving up the, the seat on the, on, the, on in the commode or whatever. I mean, this thing, the Lord says it's time. It's time to get your act together. And after two years, the Lord, is, he expects us to start fighting the flesh. It's time to make an effort to start. This is what this means here, I believe. Take ye the sum of the congregation of the children of Israel, after their families, by the house of their fathers, with the number of their names, every male by their poles. I tell you what. This is an amazing thing. I mean, I, I, I started it several times, the book of Numbers, and every time I, it's like the Lord sends me in another direction. But I thought, well, folks, it's going to be a little bumpy as we start the book of Numbers. But just hang in there. It's going to get gooder. Okay, this is the wilderness, folks. The wilderness is an uncultivated and un inhospitable re region. When the Lord force comes and, and comes into our life, we're not really we're not ready for Him, you know. I mean, some things don't drop off overnight. Some people can either you know, smoke or drink or go to parties, hang out at clubs and whatever. For some people, that some things just drop off. For other people, it's just a gradual thing. But and the Lord wings at that, you know. The Lord allows it. New Christians can get a lot, uh, can get off with a lot of stuff that I can't, you know. A new Christian can be doing stuff, the Lord says, no, you can't do that. You're, in fact, you can find an interesting story in the book of Esther. You know, when the uh, king of Ahasuerus says, the men told him, hey, why don't you, we have a contest and, and gather all the beautiful women of the kingdom and uh, you can go through them. And he says, wow, what a neat idea. <laughs> but the second time he wants to do that, uh-uh. The second time he says, hey, let's do that again. And we find out by this time, Esther is already in the kingdom. She's already in, and Esther is a picture of the whole, 
of the spirit. And so that's when Mordecai finds that there's two guys at the door planning the, the death, the murder of Ahasuerus. That's at that time. Because the Lord says, no, you can't. You, you did it once, it's okay. But you can't do that again. You're talking with death now. And I think this is what the Lord says here. The Lord puts up with our shenanigans for a little while because we're brand new. But after, that's the honeymoon stage. And after a while, the Lord says, it's time to go to war. Take the sum, every man of the congregation of the children of Israel. These are Christians, as it were, you know. These are the congregation. Every man. It says, you're saved. Okay, you're saved. That's fine. But you're still uncultivated and inhospitable. I mean, brand new Christians do some of the craziest things. You're not a Christian. How can you be doing it? Yes, they are. It's just that they're brand new. They don't know all, everything. Um, and that's why we've got to be easy on them. You can't come hard down on, 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 on new people. Uh, and they're, not, they're the neatest people to be around with, uh, needs to save people, because they're new, you know? Um, they still have that new vinyl smell. You know, so the Lord, you know, he, he's gentle with us. I remember that about the Lord. He was gentle with me. You know, he takes a towel and soap. Let's clean that up a little bit, you know? Let's, let's, let's clean that up. Some of the things overnight, folks, they just... The Lord says, you can't be doing that. But other things, it was like the desire was still there and I still wanted to do them. And so God says, you got to get rid of them. After two years, otherwise, that's what's going to happen. He's going to have to get a little harder to get those things out. Um, so if you don't take care of these things early on, it's going to be more difficult. But notice here, there's a lot of influences. And that's what we're going to... After the families... The children of Israel, by family, by tribe, by the house of their fathers. And that word house is interesting because it says it's court. With the, and it says, with the number of their names, account, tally, or telling, and names, that's character. That's how you are known. Every male by their poles. So, I looked at that, okay, so these are all, everything that's going to influence you, because you, you, that's the way you are. That's how the Lord found you. That's how he found you in a field full of blood, all muddy and stuff. That's how he finds you, you know. Your navel hasn't even been cut yet or whatever. You're pretty raggedy when he finds you. And then he's going to have, but so everything you come with, this is part of that thing. The relations, that means the family. And you know, folks, if in the olden days, if, the family has a lot of influence on you. You know, all the uncles, the grandpas, the grandmas, and your cousins and all. Man, it's amazing how we survive. And then we pick up good stuff and bad stuff from them. You know, all the, everything that's included in the tribe. And then the court, that's, I couldn't help but think courting. That's attracting a mate. And that talks about, and in the, in the bird world, folks, they could, could do some of the craziest things. Have you ever seen that? How, attracting a mate in the animal, in the bird world? These birds go through some crazy dances and activities and colors and all that to attract a mate. They want to attract a mate, and they do put up all kinds of things. And I think that's what the Lord is showing here. And I show the mom and the dad, and I put, I put emphasis on the mom. Because the guy is trying to attract her. As much, he's putting all kinds of effort to attract her. Whatever, how much money he makes, or how strong he is, or how fast, or whatever. Handsome, whatever. Whatever it takes to attract her. And then, it's up to her. It's not up to him, it's up to her. She can decide whether he's uh, acceptable, whether um, she will accept him. And if she does, she'll say yes. Because it's her eggs. It's her eggs that she's caring for. And no wonder um, uh, sources say that she has the most influence upon the children. 
because you know fathers love their kids but I tell you what it's my mom you know my dad was you know, I learned a lot of suffering mostly a lot of bad habits but from my mom I learned a lot of stuff I mean she's the one that taught me you don't obey me we're gonna have a board meeting and she kept her mom I mean she kept her word I never got spanked with my dad so this thing here we're going to see in the Bible, the Lord makes a big deal about how mom, the character of the child, or it's going to be, has a lot to do with mom. In, in, in the Bible, you read a lot about that. So-and-so and so-and-so what did this, and their mom was so-and-so. He tells you. We know who the mom of, of, of Solomon was. We know uh, the mom of... David, I mean, all these people, and their mom was so and so, because God is going to work with that. Uh, our character, how our character, who we are, is formed, mental and moral qualities. That's who you, we really are. When nobody is watching, that's our character. When nobody knows, we know that nobody is watching and we still think and act a certain way, that's our character. And mom has a lot to do with that. So the reason I, the reason I did this, because of, of what, I'm gonna, what I'm about to show you, this is why I backed up. I says, what? Every man, and says here, every male by their poles, and I think that includes women as well. Because the Bible says this concerning Christians, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female for all, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So this affects everybody. The Lord is expecting a certain character. And that's why he's going to work us over. Because he wants to do this. Now this, even the mighty Paul went through this, folks. The Bible tells us, neither went I up to Jerusalem to to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again into Damascus. Then after three years, I went to Jerusalem. So the Lord tells us that even Paul went to Arabia, to the wilderness. That's what Mount Hagar is at. So I believe that he went to Arabia for two years and then he went back to Damascus for one year, which means he was there for two years in Arabia in the wilderness. So Paul, and we know that Paul was really rough. When he came out of this experience, the apostles, they had to tell him, hey man, you know, cut it up, soften it up. And they must have had a meeting, says, we can't have Paul hanging around here. He's, he's bad for us. So you know what they did with Paul? They sent him to Tarsus and they rejected him. He, Paul wound up in Tarsus for, he must have felt pretty bad. He says, I don't blame him. I'm a Christian, but they don't want me. And it was Barnabas that went and picked him up, picked him up. He says, no, let's go get, Bar let's go get Paul. And when Paul comes back, oh yeah, he's, he's prepared. He's fired up, but he's, he's calmer now. He's a lot calmer. And so he, he's brought, so this shows you, you know, even the Lord Jesus, was in the wilderness, but we know that he was God, so he is God. So he was there to be tested that the devil had nothing in him, you know. So, okay, so this is, so, so this, so I'm asking, am I still in the wilderness? Is there a lot of wilderness still in me? I mean, this is what it, yeah. you know, it begs the question, and I'm thinking, oh yeah, there's still a lot of that in me. These people, folks, as we look at numbers, they're going to spend 40 years in the wilderness. A lot of these people, we're going to look at a census. This is a census we're about to embark in, hopefully real quick. And it tells you that the Lord, it matters to the Lord. He cares. Uh, and so we need to get, as soon as we can, we need to clean our act up. Because look at, and I need to show you this too. <clears throat> these are the sons of Jacob. This is very important to know because the Bible, when you study the Bible, the Lord gives you a lot of lists at the beginning and there's 
proper and, and just the way they need to be, like the first five uh, uh, sacrifices, he gives you the right order, and any time they're out of order, it should cost you to stop. What's going on here? It's like when you have A, B, C, D. You know, if A, B, and then you have E, I says, what? Something's wrong here. Something's, there's a reason for that. And uh, God expects us to think that way. Because look at this. This is the order of their birth. Uh, the sons of Jacob. Okay, uh, Rachel is a you, and uh, Leah is weary. That's what their names means. And I think weary, I think because the Lord is always striving with us. Because I'm going to show you why. Jacob loved Rachel. That was his favorite. That's the one he wanted the whole time. But he wound up with Leah. That's the flesh. And Leah is the spirit. She's the one that has all the fruit. Okay? And then Leah has a handmaid called Silpa. Silpa means fa fragrant trickle. Isn't it amazing? Who would name their child that? Fragrant trickle. A good smell, but it kind of oozes down. You know, it's kind of nice. Like, um, you know, a good smell. Very slow. That's how the spirit works. It just smells good. On the other hand, Bilha is to trouble or palpitate. You know, dum, 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 dum. That's, the, that's the flesh. Once the flesh gets going, you know, I gotta have that car, I gotta have that car, oh yeah. The heart is, oh, you know, or whatever, or, you know, or teenagers find themselves in the back seat of a car. Bad problems. And we know that Bill has trouble because she had Dan. And Dan, we're gonna find out later, is a troublesome tribe. And she also got Reuben in trouble. Remember that? Reuben lost his blessings because of Bilha. And uh, Reuben was the oldest boy. So he's number one, the strength of Jacob. That tells you something about the flesh. And so this is the proper order. The second one is Simeon. The third one is Levi. The fourth one is Judah. And then you have Dan, five. This is a proper order because Leah stopped having babies and Rachel says, since I can't have babies, I'm going to give you my mate. And sure enough, she had Dan and then she had Natalie. And then Leah says, well, two can play at this game. So she gave Jacob her mate and she, um, they had Gad, Zilpah had Gad and then she had Asher. And then Leah goes back to having babies again. She had Issachar, number nine, and Zebulun, number 10. And then, interesting, she has a girl. Her name is Dinah, which means justice or just, justified. Because at that point, Rachel finally has a baby, and his name is Joseph. He's the best picture of Jesus in the Old Testament. When Jesus starts to develop, then comes Benjamin, number 12. And when Benjamin is born, Rachel dies. The flesh dies. You know? And that's what happens. That's the way it should happen. When the Lord is born in us, he's over, he's, he wants to take over. And Rachel, the flesh, should be, dead, should be dead. But that's a proper order, folks. So when the order is not like that, find out why and there's really a good reason why and that's what cost me look what it says from 20 years old and upward all that are able to go forth to war in Israel thou and Aaron shall number them by their armies and with you there shall be a man of every tribe every one head of the house of his fathers from 20, so God says at a certain age I expect you to get this started go to war and and there's that there's that uh, phrase or able to go forth to war and the lord said that 20 up 20 old and upward god says he wants you to start working on your character because you're his and look, look what he says there shall be of every tribe a captain somebody that's going to influence because folks they didn't have the bible and Moses, I mean, this is, we're going to find out that this, you're talking about 2.5 million people. That's a lot of people for Moses. So he's got at least 12 captains, and these are going to be examples. 
And, and these are the names of the men that shall stand with you. So he gives us the names with you to abide. And that's the law. Moses is the law. These are the people that are going to have to step up, you know. And you're talking of, of, of them that they were baptized into Moses. We we're baptized into Jesus. So you've got to keep that separate, of, of course, because they're going after the law. And it's going to be very strict. And so to stand, that means to abide. And I found this in Psalm 15, 1. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that hath walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. The Bible says this is the man or woman that will abide in my place. You know? So the first one is Reuben. That's the right order. He says... Elisur, the son of Rub, of uh, Sidur, he's, uh, and then the second one of Simeon, uh, Shilumiel, the son of Zurish Shaddai, and then of Judah, Nashon, the son of Abinadab, and all of a sudden, I says, that's not the right order. You have one first, second, and then what happens here? Fourth, there's one missing, Lord. I said, oh, yeah, that's Levi. Well, Levi's not included. Oh, okay. Le we'll find out what happens to Levi. And then it says, of Issachar, Nathiel, the son of Zuar. I says, he's the ninth. I said, wait a minute. Okay, now that's, that's, what order is this? Well, you find out that all these boys belong to Leah. That's the order, and there's one more. So, okay, oh, okay, so all these boys belong. So now you look at the name of their fathers, because the court, remember the court is the woman, that's the wife, that's the one that's gonna have the influence. Shaddai is light, so the man is gonna be known as God is a rock. She got, he got influenced by the mom, and that's how he became a captain. The second one, Shariah Shaddai, Almighty is a rock, peace with God. Uh, the third one, people of liberality or noble. Um, and then his name means to hiss. That means if, he, if God doesn't approve of you, he, he'll hiss at you. God can, he can do that. And then Zuar is little or small God has given. So the name, the moms have influence and that's, develops their character and this, these are the character of these guys these guys are not easy to live with that's who they are and then the 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 sixth one for uh, for uh, leah is zebulon or Eliab, the son of hilan and that means to be wrong to be strong god is a father so these guys and then you get let's cover well, no, let's, let's just leave it there. And we can start there next week. But we're, start, we're talking about the, all the, how these guys are going to be the influencers. These 12 captains, they're the ones that are going to be guiding these people through the wilderness. And um, we'll leave it there. And we'll continue with the census next week. Let's pray. Lord God, maker of heaven and earth, thank you, Lord, for the book of Numbers that is Lord, it shows you how you are a God of order and you expect your people to be a certain way. And uh, Lord, we give you the praise, the glory and the honor, and we love you, Lord. And help us now to prepare our hearts and our minds to receive your word. We ask this through your son's name, Jesus Christ, for beside you there is another God. Amen. Good, good. And you have...